Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to your latest Wolves Fancast match preview. I'm your host, Little Dan, and as you can see, I've had a bit of a devastating week. Since on since that defeat to Coventry, I've had a bit of man flu, and this little man has been absolutely battered and devastated since that Coventry defeat. I haven't even had a chance to shave a beard, as you can see. I've decided, until I see Matthias Cunha play again for Wolves, I'm not going to trim my beard. And we'll see how long it lasts, because there's still a bit of... Uh, 50-50 on whether he'll feature in the game against Villa on Saturday. There were uh, a couple of videos posted uh, via Mateus Cunha's Instagram and Wolves' Instagram over the uh, the last 24-48 hours, which is good to see that he is doing a bit of light running um, at Compton, doing a bit of ball work with his son uh, Levy or Levi. I, I believe it's Levy. Some people say it's Levi. Um, yeah, let's have a quick look, quick look at the video. Uh, you back? You back? You ready? Yeah. Ready to run. Come and take some pens, huh? Yeah. Nice man. Uh, you, you back? back? You ready? Yeah. Ready to run. Come and take some pens. I hope you managed to get that video. There, he, he was. I don't know whether it stole for you guys. It stole for me. But um, like I, I said, understand. just great to see him back. I mean, I love his relationship with his kid. I, I haven't got any kids, but. It, you see them two together on their social media, and it's a uh, it's a lovely sight to see. Um, and I just think Mateus Cunha is a really lovely bloke. Got the greatest teeth, greatest smile I've ever seen for a Wolves player. He's got, got got quite big ears, and I'm, and I'm all for it. I just can't fault, but there's nothing wrong with the guy. Um, on tonight's show, I've been talking. I've been rambling for a good two minutes here. I've got Tom Gibson and Dean joining me. How are you, Tom? I'm all right, mate. Thank you. I'm happy to be back on, and I'm happy that Mateus Cunha is back in training. <laughs> It's massive. He's so key to us. Um, obviously, the, the amount of players that we've got out uh, injured at the moment, Pedro Neto, Wangi Chan, um, Jean-Rick Nobelgaard, Craig Dawson still 50-50 for the, the game this weekend. It, it couldn't have come at a worse time coming towards the business end of the season and then going into a sort of social media rivalry derby against Villa on, on Saturday. They're, they're big players to miss, but Cunha, if we can get him featuring in these last, you know, eight, seven, eight games, however many it is now, it's, it's going to be massively important to see how far we can finish. Because if you look at the league table, folks, we win on Saturday and Man United lose to Brentford in the 8 o'clock kickoff. We're only three points behind Man United in six because Newcastle uh, start the weekend at home to um, West Ham, who are only three points in front of us. It's a massive week. You're looking at those fixtures there, Tom. Um, we'll talk a bit, a bit more on Villa Wolves in depth after this. But Saturday, three o'clock kickoffs: Bournemouth, Bournemouth versus Everton, Chelsea versus Burnley, Forest versus Palace, Sheffield United at home to Fulham, and Tottenham versus Luton. Where's your money for a banker winner then? Saturday, three o'clock. Um. Wow. I mean, really, the one that I'd I'd bank on probably Spurs to win, but. Luton have got a really good fight in them, to be fair, this season. Um, and they have surprised me. But I don't think they've got enough to hold off games. So, if I'm to put my money on someone to win from three o'clock kickoff, I'd probably go with Tottenham. Yeah, I think that's the um, one of the bankers, isn't it there, Dean? I think a lot of uh, fancy Premier League players will be lumping on Tottenham players this game week of game week 30. What about... Yourself, if, if excluding Spurs, Luton, Dean, just look at the rest of the fixtures there. You've got uh, Brentford versus Man United at eight o'clock. Uh, I've already mentioned Newcastle versus West Ham. That's a 12 30 kickoff. Liverpool versus Brighton and the concluding the weekend, Man City versus Arsenal. Uh, I'd, I'd say Liverpool probably should have the, the edge over Brighton at two o'clock on Sunday, but looking towards that Man City Arsenal, where's your money on that game, Dean? The final one, it's got to be City at home. Um, but going back to the three o'clock, my money will be on Chelsea against Burnley because Burnley will lose on Saturday, they'll get stuffed and then they'll beat us 1-0 on Tuesday, um, which is standard Wolves way. Um, yeah, for the City game though, I think it's a massive game, but I think City being at home, it's it, that would then the wheels will come off Arsenal if they don't get a result there. But even if it is a draw or Arsenal do snick it, you still fancy City to bounce back. But could it be the could it be the game that derails Arsenal season potentially? Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love nothing more than Arsenal tears on the timeline. What's your um, feeling on that Man City Arsenal game, Tom? I'll, I'll give you mine after yours. I mean, pff, massive. Um, 
Look, Dean just said, though, you can never write City off, really. I think they've proved it the past couple of seasons. The way they just put turn go into a different gear towards the end of the season, even if they lose this game, if they go and win the rest that they've got by a hefty amount, which is what they usually do. But I, I think being at home plays a lot. So I'd probably, I think it'll end in a draw. I think it'll be like a 2-2 two, two or a 3-3. Three, three. It's, it's, it's a huge game in the title race that is on um, on Saturday because, like you said, Liverpool um, at home to Brighton. I can't really see Brighton getting a result from that. Uh, I think that's going to be the game where Liverpool really cement themselves to finish in the top two wherever they end up. There's something niggling me in the back of my mind. I think Arsenal might do a number on City this weekend. Obviously, City have got Carl Walker as a doubt. John Stones didn't look too great with that little bit of knee jar that happened in the fixture between England and, and Belgium uh, last night. Erling Haaland, I don't think he um, he had a bit of a problem during the one training session, didn't he, where he limped off? Yeah, come, training. Off come off I still early, think... We can't have Arsenal Man City. I, I, Dean, <laughs> it, it, it's got to that point, and, and, and a lot of people have become shocked about it when I've said it, but it's got to the point now I'd rather Liverpool win the league than Arsenal. <laughs> and it, that's, that's how much... Arsenal fans have rankled me over the last three to four years because it's the one the season every week, every week there's that Martinelli clip. Martinelli clip comes on, doesn't it? Of the double yellow card, and I just, I just, they have this infatuation with Wolves, and I don't know where it's come from because we beat them a couple of times, but and that, just, they can't win. That um, that Willie and Jose challenge always comes up yeah. now and again from lockdown. Yeah, I, ever since the, uh, the the pandemic era, I think we, we finished above them, didn't we, the one season? Yeah. And I think we had like maybe one or two seasons back to back where we were pushing in and around the same places as Arsenal. And they literally just belittled us into young wolves. You shouldn't even be in contention yeah. with us for these party places. That's how much they've fallen from grace. It's been, what, nearly 20 years? It might be the 20-year anniversary since the last one, the title. And you yeah. still think with their entitlement on social media that they should be winning or in the title race every single season and them just not they're not him in regards to football teams am they i've got three arsenal fans on my team as well and they love nothing better than giving their boss a bit of stick when they beat us so i just i just can't be doing it just for that reason they, they just can't win the league so like i just said i think man city just on the man city of of recent years i don't think they've replaced the goals of mares and gundogan Anywhere near well enough with um, you mean cast like sort of Doku, uh, Greenish was there the season before. Greenish has had an awful season compared to to last. Erling Haaland hasn't really hit the ground running this season, has he? Even though he's still like, is he still top goal scorer in the league? Yeah, massively ahead. Yeah, it's it, it's mad. And um, obviously, I don't know whether Edison's going to be available the weekend. Um, or Tiger was in goal, wasn't he? The previous couple of yeah. games, Arsenal. Um, Recruited quite well this season. I think um, Declan Ross has been huge for them. Massive. And it seems to me, like, there's something in the back of my mind that tells me it might be that that sort of similar game. And when Leicester went to City and rolled them over, yeah, yeah, it might end up being like that on Sunday. I mean, hopefully not, because for me, guys, Man City winning the league is, is the best of all evils, isn't it? <laughs> of course it is. Of course. Better the devil you know. I mean, I don't want to go to Anfield on the, la on the last game of the season to see Liverpool win the title. Um, I mean, it'd be great to go to Anfield and, and and somehow cost Liverpool win the title. I think I'd be up for Arsenal win the league, you know, if we cost Liverpool the title. But that's the only sort of scenario where I'd be up for it. Craig Dawson, last-minute header. Or, I, I mean, it's looking like he's not going to feature again this season, but for Pedro Neto finally to score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know he scored the, 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 the last time we played the last game of the season, yeah, didn't yeah. he? But we ended up losing the yeah. game. But if, um, I mean, just someone random, a 30 yard Nelson Samada won the goal. Oh. <laughs> Liam <laughs> King gives you nice. seven out of ten for scoring the winner. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a massive game. Uh, Man City Arsenal, I think whoever wins that game might have the momentum to go on to win it. I did say before Liverpool Man City, the team who goes on to win that game, the momentum would take them on to win it. The both true. So maybe this is the game where it, it finally kicks on in the title race. What's your sort of opinions on what I said earlier, guys, about if we win on Saturday, three points behind Man United? Man United is still a, a catchable for you, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, one hundred percent. We've still got a load of games to play. Um, I know we've got a tough run in. We, you know, we've still got to play City, Liverpool, um, Arsenal. I'm pretty sure, which are obviously tough games. But we always have good games against the bigger teams. We always show up against the teams above us. I'd like to say anyway. Um, I think they're definitely catchable. I mean, say we leave Villa Park with three points, like you say, you you just like you're just about behind them. And if they say they drop a couple of points or they've got a couple of injuries, I know we've got our own, but you've got a couple of players coming back now, Cunha, Bellegard, these type of players. If there's no reason why we couldn't, there's no reason to write it off, really. You look from sort of six down to 11th, maybe even 12th, Dean. It's still all to play for in that, that middle yeah. block, ain't it? I look, I look at our fixtures, I'm like, oh, we've got a tough run in. It's the next month or so that's make or break for a season. But you look at, we've got a game in hand on West Ham. That puts us level on points. Brighton and West Ham arm as well. We've got West Ham to play. We've got Luton to play. We've got Bournemouth to play. These are the games where we need to be getting our points in. And we don't want to go into those last three or four where we've got City, Liverpool, Arsenal where we need to be getting wins from. Like, I think it's Palace, our last game, our home game, isn't it? Um, so it's kind of, they'll be safe. They'll be playing for, for nothing at that point. So you'd like to back us if we've got something to go for. But, you know, you look at the, there's just, you look at the forms on there. So you've got, as is kind of marginally better than Brighton's, it's better than West Ham. So we need to just continue as we are. I know we've got the blip with the injuries, but if we can still, we, dev, we don't tend to draw too many. It's either win or a loss, which is better. If you're winning, if you're winning two out of four, then you're still ticking over more than a point a game, aren't you? So that's the key, really. Just keep picking the wins at where we can I'll, and then target our home games. Burnley on Tuesday is going to be massive. And then we've got, then then you've got to move on. You've got to gap a little bit then, aren't you, where we've got next Saturday. So it's going to be, that yeah, it's going to be tough. And we've got that one week where we've got like three games, three home games in a week. I think it's coming up. Yeah, and that, that's going Arsenal to be a, and uh, Luton. Luton. So you look at those three. That that's going to be a massive week for our season. Our, our season's all riding on our home fixtures for me. Yeah. I think we've got. So we've got. You look at the league table there. We've got ten fixtures left to play. We've only got Arsenal and West Ham in the top half at home still to play. You look yeah. at our record. We've got a good, really good record against West Ham at home. It ain't going to be an easy game by you know, a long way. But you look at our record over recent years against West Ham, we, we, we pick up good points against West Ham. We've got the game in hand against West Ham as well. And um, I mean, you look at our away fixtures, um, Forest going to be a tough game, but I still think we can get a, a, a good result there. Um, you've already mentioned we've got Man City, Liverpool and Burnley away from home as well as... Is there another one? Who's the other away game? I think that's it. I don't, yeah. Villa this no, week. Oh, yeah, Villa this week. Yes, I mean, if you can pick up good points. I mean, I know Arsenal are a good side and we ain't got a good record against them, but at Molyneux, I mean, I don't know, we lost our last game against Coventry there, but we've been good at home. We are yeah. good at home. And when the bigger teams come, the, the, the fans do rally, the players do raise the game. I still think the European place is, is more than feasible this year. If we fall short, we fall short. There's, there's, there's good excuses. To even be in the conversation at this point of the season is massive. And that Arsenal home game, eight o'clock, is it half past seven or something on a Saturday night? The place mm. is going to be bouncing. Yeah. And yeah, that's definitely. that's the perfect fixture time for us to have them at home because they they ain't going to travel very well because of getting home after on the trains after the game that late on a Saturday. And then you've got all day in town. It's just what gonna what be was massive. it? Um... What was the thing that we had before one of the night games and goggles? We need to make sure we wear them goggles again, the players. What oh, yeah, the day, the, it was Brighton away, the day, wasn't it? it? The daytime goggles or something like that. Yeah, daylight goggles. <laughs> yeah, that, the players will wear the goggles and we wear, we'll have our beer goggles on for that 8 o'clock Arsenal yeah. game on that Saturday night. There'll be goggles, the goggles everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'd like to have an impact in the title race, whether it's you know the, either the two fixtures away to Liverpool and Man City or that Arsenal game, because I still think you know if we can finish if we can finish eighth, it's, it's an outstanding season. But you look at that league table I've already mentioned, a win on Saturday, uh, you go you go level with West Ham on forty four points away to Newcastle, you're three points behind Man United if they don't um, if they get beat away to Brentford, which is more than feasible. It's, it's it's all to play for. We, it's all it's all in our hands as well. He's got to stick stick behind the team. 
like you said, it was a bit unfortunate and a bit heartbreaking the way that we we got beat in the end by Coventry, but we didn't deserve anything from that game, did we? It was it, nah. it was tough to watch at times. Charles Asar had probably one of the games of his life, yet still conceded three. Um, Ellis Sims was just an absolute donkey and still managed to score two. When things go against you, it's just classic Wolves, ain't it? And that was one of them days. I thought the atmosphere could have been a lot better. Um, mm. It's all hindsight now. I'm, I'm still a bit bemused in Gary O'Neill's pre-match press conference with the illusion that maybe Neto or Belgard may have featured or or Cunha was, I think he might say Cunha was available for the game. Yeah. For then, you get to sort of five past two, sorry, what now was a uh, what was it? Oh, quarter past 12 quarter, quarter, quarter past 11 or something yeah. like that wasn't it <laughs> yeah so yeah 11 a.m quarter past 11 and you see the, the team line up and it was deflating wasn't it going into that ground because you knew it was going to be you know an uphill task but i feel like if he would have just played the card this is what we've got this is what we've, we're playing with tomorrow guys we need yeah. your support more than ever the fans yeah. might have been a bit more up for it and and yeah. rallied a bit more i still think wars on an early early kickoff on a saturday We've now pretty much drinking times. Just what, yeah. why we can't get up for midday games as, as a fan base still boggles me. Because apart from when you had no problems, did they? Apart from away games, when we're in B seventy one, then we get up for them. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's easier <laughs> done. Like you, you've got an extra like hour in bed, guys, and <laughs> mulling you early midday kickoffs. It just it doesn't kick on, doesn't it? And nah. as much as like the the players may have on paper in text let us down I don't think the fans really played as much part as what they could have uh, did a nice uh, T-file display via the old goal pack and you know they rallied towards the end but we could have done a lot more as a, as a fan base and a team on on Saturday yeah, against Coventry the the, 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 the the formation the setup could have been different we're all, we're all working on hindsight now what was your biggest dif- dis- disappointment from that Coventry game Tom? <sighs> I mean, there's so um, many. I mean, we, we lost to a uh, lower league side. It was, it was disappointing, <laughs> um, wasn't it? But I think, like, I mean, you've got to look at so many different things. I mean, I looked at it as from Gary O'Neill's point of view, it was probably one of the biggest games as a manager that he, you know, that he has had so far. So I think he had a lot of pressure to do with it. I think it being an early kickoff, like we've just mentioned, that changes the whole perspective of the game. Um, I thought the atmosphere was really dire. I mean, I was obviously on that day, it was five years before when we beat Man United. So then that kind of got me a bit, you know, you think back to that time, going back to Wembley, you're 90 minutes away. And then we got in the ground and as you say, the team's different. You've got a lot of academy in, which isn't a problem, but you've half got your hopes of Cunha coming back in, of Belgard, of these players coming in, they're not there. So it's a bit of a trust issue, really. Um and then I thought when we was when we for those minutes that we was lead when we had the lead, the atmosphere was fantastic because we all thought we was going to Wembley. The atmosphere was unbelievable. We, you know the Bueno chant came out. Ev- everyone was having a party. That's how that's how it should have been from minute zero to ninety. We could have we could be saying now that we were going to Wembley because I as we say I think the fans play a huge part in the game. There was a time this season where we, were, until the Man United game, I think we was unbeaten at home for about eight, nine games. You've got to look at your fans. That's your fans bringing you in, and that's what O'Neill used to say in his press conferences, saying that you know that they 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 know that we bring them through. So we shouldn't stop that. Do you know what I mean? Especially now, the minutes, the games we've got to go into Europe. I don't think there's another time where the players are going to need us more, especially when our backs are against the wall. And before the season, everyone back to us to go down. What sort of players in that Coventry game disappointed you, Dean? I think Mario Lamini was the one for me. Um, he yeah. was, was, was so key. To, he's been so key to our season. I mean, he's, he's probably been the, the most biggest player since, um, you know, last January transfer window under Lopetegui. Him and Craig yeah. Dawson, that spine, um, have been unreal for us. But... I thought him and um, Pablo Sarabia did not give Nathan Fraser the support that he needed. I thought Nathan Fraser was was thrown under the buzz against Coventry. He was clearly out of his depth in that game, but the support that he was given by the experienced players around him, I felt sorry for Nathan Fraser in the end. I thought Leon Chihuahua did a, an half-decent job when he came on. 
we're yes. still relying on like you know, think they were, they were on scraps. It was the first. It was the first time that Mario had played and didn't look what he was meant. Didn't look like he knew what he was doing. Usually, when they put him in this hybrid against Brighton, it was a very clear tactic. But Coventry just didn't work for one reason or another. Um, I think Kilman. I, I didn't like Kilman's performance in that game. You're talking about your captain, your lead. You suppose I know leaders don't always wear the armband like Mario is, but. I think it, it, I didn't see enough from him. and But for me, the biggest takeaway from the game was when we got to 2-1, it's then criminal to give that away. Like, you've got you've undeservedly got ahead. And there was no reason. Gary O'Neill still had Boober on the bench. What, why? Even if you want to take Chuomi off, even if you want to take somebody that's just come on, take Doc back off, you, 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 it's all good out the window at that point. You've got where you need to get to, just shore things up at the back. But again, that stops with Kilman. And one of the things, especially on the winning goal, it's like a carbon copy of the Man United, the Kobe Mayno goal. But we to, for the four three, Kilman's just I don't know what he's, he's like. He's in a long barrier, like he's playing cricket. He's just got, got his one knee on the floor. And as Josh put in the comments, like Kilman and Bueno making Sims look like a good. Uh, that does tell you everything you need to know about Josh's scouting knowledge, though. To be fair, they would actually think um, Sims would be a decent signing, but. Um, I think it was purely the fact that you looked at saw Nathan Fraser and and Leon Chuame when they came on, just the, the physicality and the sort of, you know, professional goyle that Sims had. Just yeah, he's a proper the, championship striker. Something yeah. that we 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 needed for a while, like that. Some a different option. You look at the Che Adams talk. He's that type of physical. Puts himself about. Some off the we, for a Premier League team, you're never going to have to rely on that person. Look at Luton, for example. They started with Carlton Morris. They've gone away from him a bit later, like lately, because they've realised that that physical strike is a good impact, but it's not something you can rely on every single week. So, I think that was it's it showed something that we didn't have. Like we look at like in the summer, we looked at cheap ones. Years ago, we looked at Kiefer Moore. It's that type of player that if you're a Premier League club, you bring it on last 15 minutes, just gives you some a different different angle, different somebody to occupy defenders, which what Fraser was meant to do. But like you said, they didn't feed him. But there was also times where, particularly Sarabia, you could tell they don't trust him that much. There was passes on and they choose to just play it backwards rather than feed him because they know his level isn't that level yet. It he is a top end League One striker at the moment. So it's it's all it was like a perfect storm that game was. It was it was look we will look back at it and we'll think, you know what, we probably was a little bit harsh on them, but when it's so raw, like even I think it was yesterday, I, I got my jacket out there, I wore to the game. I still had that little bag that was off the chair and it gave me PTSD when I got out. I was like, oh my God, I <laughs> took that in the bin quick time. Yeah, it's tough. It was a tough day. Tough day at Um uh, Let's try and be positive for a f- few seconds. Ryan ain't Nori, guys, in that Coventry game. Oh. Everyone's talking about Pedro Neto being sold in the summer. Jao Gomez, you know, Mateus Cunha, if he probably wouldn't have got injured, he probably would have been um, being looked at by some top sides, but Roy Knight Nori Tom just gets better and better every game, and he's, he's become so key to this Gary O'Neill setup. Just, just how good is he, and what sort of money should Wolves be looking for him in the summer if a, a top side does come in because Liverpool have been linked? I mean, you're going to have loads of clubs coming for him in the summer. Um, price tag, I mean. It's what the club value him at. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's on a decent contract. I'm sure he's still got some length on his contract with Wolves. So, if they're in favour, you should be looking at, like, I'd probably say 60 to 80 million between that mark. Um, But the sort of player he is, I think it's scary to see, scary to think, sorry, that Lopetegui wanted to sell him and get Aaron Cresswell in because that would have been one of the worst transfers, I think, in this club's history because his talent on the ball is unbelievable. Now, a lot of like my mates who don't support Wolves have said, why well, doesn't he play left wing? Which I understand because he's so good going forward, but he's also so good defensively. So if you put him left wing, you still kind of want him to defend. Yeah, it's, it's all going back to Hunter, isn't it? A lot of people have been clamouring for Ryan Aitno to be in that left wing role. I think that comedy game was probably made for him, wasn't it, Dean? With maybe having Hugo Bueno at left wing back, or you know, just going with a, a solid back four and having Lamina in the midfield three and 
the main yeah, adorable and Zhao Gama in a free. He's such a unicorn of a left back or a left wing back. Like if you look at you look at the big clubs now where they play the the hybrid, which we do to an extent, but we don't have as much possession. But if you've got a City or an Arsenal and they've got him coming in and joining the midfield and just creating, he, he just causes havoc. He causes chaos because of his he's just so press resistant. Like that that clip that going round of him for um, Algeria, like literally, like he's just he's a wizard with the ball over his feet and. We've got that clause. Angers have got that clause where he can uh, that they're they're owed fifty percent, but we've got it. There's a cap on that. I think we can buy that out for like ten million euro or something. So that's what that's probably the first bit of business we need to do in the summer is get rid of that clause, especially if people are seriously looking at him. But I think Tom's right. You, you, for the type of player he is and how important he is to us, you know, other fans are like he's not worth sixty million, sixty five or seventy. But to our system and to the way that Gary O'Neill sets us up. He, he is the biggest loss when he's not there of the whole team. He's just so in everything that we do, defensively, attackingly. Like he's just so unorthodox in the way he does things. Like he is mad. Like Gary O'Neill says himself, he's mad. But he's so effective with it as well. And it's the effectiveness that's coming more this season. He's always been the dribbler, whereas now he's picking up goals, he's picking up assists, he's getting in the box, he's impacting games directly a little bit more in front of the net. Which that's the bit that he's adding. If he continues to do that. His ceiling is massive. He can get to the very top. Yeah, he definitely is that good. Um, played for Algeria, didn't he, uh, this week? He's going to be... He'll be their captain in a few years' time because I think more of their uh, senior players are coming towards the end of their career now. Well, now I think Mahrez is ageing now. Um, I can't think who's the other one. Uh, oh, they've got another one, haven't they? I can't think. Yeah, he is a future of, of Algerian football, Ryan Out Nori is. For me, he, he was sort of being touted to play for France a few years ago. Obviously, Algeria is the team for him, but he, he literally could have been France's left back on he is, he is that good. Um, let's talk about the, the team news for Saturday's away fixture to Aston Villa. Everyone knows um, that Hwangi Chan is still a few weeks away from uh, returning to to train he has been seen doing a bit of gym work in the last few days on his social media i think gary o'neill said about maybe a week or so ago he was still sort of three four five weeks away so it's going to be a while before you see wangi chan in a wolf shirt uh same with pedro neto there's a possibility that pedro neto probably may have played his last game for, for wolves uh due to that that injury if he makes the, the last couple of games of the season it'd be a surprise but with that hamstring injury i don't think He'll want to risk it himself with the. Um... I think he'll only play if he's got a sniff of making the Euro squad. He'll be speaking to Martinez, and if Martinez says, "Well, you need to play for me to be able to pick you," then I think he'll force himself to play the last couple of games. If if he's already out, the manager's thinking for that. I don't think he'll even push himself. I I don't I don't think he'll go in the summer because I I simply think that if because of his injuries, I don't think clubs are going to want to pay what we want. I agree with that to a degree. I just still think if what we're saying is, I said a few weeks back, I think Wolves should be looking for around 70, 80 million pounds for him mm. before the injury happened. If a club this summer comes in with a 50 million pound bid, are the club going to take that bid? And it wouldn't surprise me if they did because I think it would. It I could think help if, you had a, if, you, if you had a sell on percentage, they'd take it. Mm, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just I feel like some of the the conversations that keep coming out of the club about how, um, you know Jeff Shee says that Folsom wants to be self sufficient. Jeff Shee doesn't want to ask Folsom for money when a fifty million pound bid comes in for a player who's got an injury record like Pedro Neto has. Will will the club begrudgingly accept it, knowing they can try and bring in a, a few players to help? build the squad, which is what's pretty much cost us this season, as it's similar to what happened under Bruno Lodge under his first season. They let Adama go out in January. They didn't bring anyone in. And that lack of squad depth in the end cost us, didn't it? And it's yeah. it's pretty much come to bite us on the arse again. Um, so we've already mentioned Mateus Cunha's back in. Uh, he's, he's outside training, whether he's actually doing any... It was um, a bit odd, that was. ...training. Because he put the video on of him on the training ground. But then today, he's put a video of him walking on the beach with his son. So I'm like, mm -hmm. is there some kind of voodoo mind games at play where that video at the Compton was actually like a few days ago before he went away on holiday? 
I know he went to Abu Dhabi last week. But I don't know if I don't know. It's just a social media, and it can never really tell what it is. Maybe, yeah, maybe it could. Maybe it could have been like from that, and he's posted it this week. Maybe. Yeah. Know, yeah, I think there, there was a bit of mind games, wasn't there, before the commentary game, whether he was going to feature. That um, I'm not really sure show. on how much impact that would have had to Mark Robbins' team selection, whether Cunha was starting, really. Um, obviously, you have to be a bit more focused on a player like Cunha's on the pitch, but Wars weren't really going to set up in, in much of a different shape, really, was there, whether Cunha was no. starting or not? No. It'll be massive if he, he can feature the game on on Saturday away at Villa because he's he's so key to the way that we can build from the back and you know carry the ball from deep and literally just just create anything on out of his own space, Carney. So it'll be massive. Morpus Wolves commented saying, What's your predicted lineup for Saturday, lads? I mentioned earlier, we've only got about 12, 13 players you can probably pick from for a starting lineup. Jose Sar starts again, doesn't he? You you're back. Yep. Your back line pretty much picks itself. Some Aydan, out Nori, wing backs, Kilman and Totti. Whether uh, Dawson can can return to squad, we still don't know until Gary O'Neill's uh, pre match press conference, which is likely to be on Friday. I think Santi Bruno, as good as he has been in recent weeks, um, really let himself down, didn't he? Against Ellis Sims. So yeah, I think fit. The, the, the only worry with Dawson is I think the way that Villa play. I might be jumping a little bit ahead, but the way Villa plays, they target stuff there in the right. So DRB or Bailey will naturally pull to the right hand side. So I think they'll target the space in behind Eight Nori and Totti, which mm. then you, therefore you'd want Dawson in the middle because you want him to control and marshal Totti, which I don't think Bueno's quite to that level yet with the communication. Um, but then at the same time, you think about Watkins' pace against Dawson, it gives you heart attack. So it's it's very it's very difficult on the balance um, on which one of them would go with. I think because he's such an experienced pro, you'd have to go with Dawson just if he's fit. Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, so that's actually back line. If you go with sort of a midfield two again, it's probably going to be uh, Lamina and Jao Gomez. It's wherever Tommy Doyle starts with, with Jao Gomez. Like I mentioned, Lamina starts in this hybrid role again, which, you know, it worked quite well against Brighton in, in, in the FA Cup. Uh Played brilliantly at home in the two-one win against Fulham, so there's no reason why Gary O'Neill might not go with it again. But um, it just it definitely didn't work against Coventry. But like I said, Stars, it's a bit like boxing, really. You know, Stars make fights. I think with the right setup and the right lineup, Gary O'Neill can get us a result away at Villa on Saturday. It's going to be difficult because they're they're a good side. But you got to take into account Villa have lost four at last five at home. Yeah. Got John McGinn, who's out suspended. Mateus Kasovic is out for three weeks. Um, they're not a great side, but like like I just mentioned with Gary O'Neill, Unai Emery's got a, a good way of setting teams up to get results, and they're a very it's annoying a team. Game. They're a very annoying team. They never you never watch them and think, oh, they're a good team. But they always they've not looked teams. like a top four side all season, have they? Yet they've been no. effective enough to get the points to get there. They're they're annoyingly efficient as a football team. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was your sort of main concerns um, from that Villa lineup, based on the fact that I've said Matt Cash is out, um, injured for three weeks, John McGinn suspended. Ollie Watkins, I still think, is one of the most highest uh, fancy Premier League point scorers yeah. this season. So, yeah, he's going to be. What um, we're going for up top? What we're going to go with? What do you think? So, um, Billy, who I um, feature on the 12th man podcast, we've sent me a predicted lineup of Emmy Martinez with a back four of uh, Ezri Conta right back, Diego Carlos and Pau Torres centre halves with uh, Luca Dinha or Alex Moreno left back, a midfield four of Bailey and um, Rogers on the wings with Tielemans and Douglas Louise in the centre with Watkins and Diaby up front, which that could sort of lead to a sort of 4-2-4 or 4-3-3 based on with and without the ball. <coughs> Excuse me. So you look at that lineup, the midfield battles, where it's going to be won on Saturday. As good as I, I, I really rate Yuri Tielemans, I always have rated Yuri Tielemans. I was disappointed when he went to Villa on a free transfer. Douglas Luiz keeps on being linked to Arsenal every few transfer windows. But João Gomez and Mario Lamina, I'd back to get the better of those two on Saturday, Tom. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I agree with what you just said. The midfield wins you the game. Um, I think Gomez, you know, as he is, Pitbull, 
Um, I think he'll be all over the pitch. I think it'll be good for him to play against Luis. I think he'll go one on one with him. So that'll be a battle of the Brazilians. Um, and then Lamina is just Pera House. I could see him being all over Tielemans. Um, I have rated Tielemans. I liked him at Leicester, um, but I think sometimes he can like he can lack tracking back. Um, he's not as much as a box to box to what he used to be. I don't think. So that's where I think Lamina has more on him. And Tommy Doyle, if Tommy Doyle comes in, I think both of them players have it over him, have more legs than him. Um, so, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. I definitely think the midfield wins the game, but I think we've got enough to win over their midfield, personally. Still on mute, mate. Still on mute. Because of your cough. Yeah, trying to avoid getting this cough involved in this show. Sorry, guys. Uh, my main concern for this game on Saturday is how much more pace they've got in the transition compared to us, like mentioned, us lacking Pedro Neto. When we do turn them over, you, you haven't got that break quick, have you? If Mateus Cunha can sort of... I mean, I, I'm talking about Mateus Cunha starting here and in the back of my mind, I'm not even sure whether he's even going to feature on Saturday. This The, the videos that they've put out in the last day or so where he's... He's only doing sort of light running. I don't know whether he's even done any contact training yet. I, I don't know whether this game's going to come too soon from him. Maybe it's another case of playing mind games with Villa that he might play. But I could mention just Mark Robbins or in our memory. I, I don't think they're going to change Please Villa regardless of whether he starts or not. It's, it's just disappointing, like I said, the amount of players that we've got injured. Because I, f- I feel like going to Villa with a, a full strength side, even if they had McGinn and... Um, Matty Cash available, I still think we could get a good result there with a full strength lineup. And this mm. is why it's so disheartening. It's come at the worst time of the season. Ollie Watkins is going to be a handful. Um, Moussa Diaby, I thought, was um, a really, really good sign. He hasn't really hit the ground running, whereas Leon Bailey in recent months has, hasn't he, uh, Tom? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think no matter how good Villa are, you know, whether top four or whether there was in 18th place. I think Derby games are completely different to any other game. I've always said that. Um, I think there'll be a lot of challenges where we'll cancel out their counter-attack. Um, as you say, us on the counter-attack, on the other hand, without Neto, it's more of a build-up more than a straight look, pass and go. Um, I think we'll have to have a long amount of possession for us to get out a chance. But I think it just depends how we set up. Um, and like you said, the midfield just wins you the game, really. But I think the main thing for us is winning the ball back when we lose it. I think that's what we'll be, we'll be good at. I think that's what will win us the game. Because I feel like as much as how quick they are on the transition, I think with the likes of Gomez, Lamina, Doyle, etc. in the midfield, I think they'll shut that down. They'll be told to shut that down the most you can, take a book in if you have to, um, to stop them attacking, really. So I think stuff. I think that's going to win us the game, cancelling their transition. Yeah, it's going to be a difficult game. I think the biggest dilemma, and I wouldn't want to be in Gary O'Neill's um, shoes when he has to pick the decision, but um, Josh has made the comments, um, obviously in the YouTube comments, surely you're going Ryan out, Nori, Cunha, even on one leg, and Sarab, you're up front on Saturday. Let's just take Matthias Cunha out the um, the mindset for the moment. Leon Chua, my own name from Fraser. Dean, where are you going I'm, there? Uh, I'm, I'm sticking Doc up front. It's, it keeps on being talked about. <laughs> we, we haven't had a we haven't had a Matt Doherty number nine role yet, and it, it's going to happen soon. <laughs> soon or later, it, it keeps him getting him closer. Even more, more got the winner at Anfield. Doherty's going to be given the run out of number nine. Nah, I think in seriousness, I think it depends. Obviously, Leon's been away with the, the age groups for England, so he's not going to be completely fresh. You don't want to overwork him. So I mean, he scored he scored the winner, didn't he, the other day? He did. he's, he's been playing regular football for our under um, 21, under 24. He he's been playing for England. So, Matt Sharpness, he can't be far away, but it's still that physicality when he comes against I think, top European quality defenders like Diego Carlos and Pau Torres. I think the, the problem the problem I see is that even if we do, whichever one of them we we play and if you play them with Sarabia I do think he'll go with the three midfield I think he'll go with Lamina in this hybrid because he wants that security in the midfield of Lamina coming in um, so I think our, our best chance of um, goals is going to be set pieces um, I don't see us creating much from open play 
um, with the just Sarabia, unless you've got Samedo and Eight Nori bombing on, that's going to be that's going to be a good that's going to be a good way to attack. But I think I'd probably go Frazier because he's been around the team longer. He knows the system, the patterns a little bit more. Um, I think that's the, probably where he'll go. He'll go Sarabia, Fraser, and then play all three of them in the middle: Lamina, Gomez, and Doyle. I'm going Leon Chihuahua up for him. I feel like you've already mentioned it, Dean. I don't think the players around Nathan Fraser trust him. Um, Leon Chihuahua has just come off um, scoring a winner for England. I know he's still young. He's only, I think he's only a year younger than Nathan Fraser, though. Yeah, he's got more um, pace about him than Fraser, and he, like that's what we we really that, miss. I'm just trying to think what Gary would do. I think, me personally, I like the threat that Chihuahua gives you a little bit more than Fraser. And uh, Fraser's more physical, but Chihuahua is still a, still a big enough lad and he's got more pace about him. So I can, I can definitely see that. But I personally think that he'll go, Gary will go the Fraser option instead. I, I, know, think, he'll, I think he'll go with Fraser as well. But I think as much as both of these players are extremely young, I think you can already see the differences they've got from the Coventry game. You know, Fraser was limited with the amount of service he had and what he had in the game. But I think as well, especially when you look at like when he played against Blackpool and Brentford, you do have a little bit more space um, on the ball as when it was Coventry, he consistently had a man on his shirt, on his shoulder. And I think it, it takes a lot to deal with that. Um, but I think when Chirome come on, you could see he was a lot faster than Fraser. So... But I think they've still got a long way to come. I think, especially with Chihuahua just scoring for England, it's going to be a lot for him to go from St George's Park to Villa Park in a, in a big derby. So I think Gary will go with Fraser, go with Fraser because he pretty much has to, really. Um, I don't think Cunha's going to be ready. I haven't heard anything about Belgard either. So I think he'll go with um, Fraser, Sarabia. Um, and maybe eight Nori up top, and then maybe Bueno, Hugo Bueno at left back, maybe like we saw in the Coventry game. Gary O'Neill's said a few times, hasn't he? He still doesn't see Roy and eight Nori in this left wing position, which, based on the last few games where we've, I mean, but it's mainly the Coventry game, isn't it? Until sort of like Roy and eight Nori pushed a bit more further forward, we just had no sort of attacking intent, did we? Um, I'm not sure whether it was, I think it might have been Tom who mentioned just that it's probably going to be down to set pieces. And there was a reason why I put Totti Gomez as this week's uh, form now Wolves player because, you know, he's, he scored a winner against these before. Um, hopefully he'll, he'll do it again on Saturday. But um, this is the part of the show where I hate the most. What's your score prediction for the game on Saturday, Tom? Uh, Aston Villa versus Wolves at half past five on Sky Sports main event. I said it earlier today. I'm going to say smash and grab. Last minutes of the game, 1 0 Wolves. Dean, where's your money at? Um, Jao Gomez to be booked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Douglas Louise bet. to be booked. I should have flipped this side. Bet, bet build a thing again from now before bet. the Coventry um, game. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'm going to go 1 1. I think, I think, yeah, I think 1 1, I'd be happy with that. I, I, I can't see us keeping a clean sheet. We've, we've gone into the little rook of not being able to keep them very often again. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Um, obviously, on, on social media, since since he scored against Brentford in the uh, the FA Cup replay, we were pushing, you know, release the Tiger for Nathan Fraser uh, in our WhatsApp group the other day. Um, I've, I've, I'm not sure everyone knows. Uh, Leon Chihuahua is from Brighton. And uh, okay. what do Seagulls do, guys? They shit on the villa so i'm going <laughs> two on wolves on saturday and leon chuame gonna score the winner you, have you have you, you got that video to close out with that lady singing in the boring nah i should I, oh. I, like I said man, man flu's battered me I've, I've rushed this show together tonight to be fair i, mean, I didn't even send <laughs> the link until flipping quarter past eight whatever it was um yeah it's going to be tough on saturday i'm 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 gonna i'll be going to the game uh i'll be in birmingham city center from early trying to get rid of this last bit of man flu on the spirit. So hopefully we can get a good result. Um, thanks to everyone who's joined us on the Wolves Fancast match preview with myself, Dean and Tom. We'll be back on Sunday with a review of the match. So yeah, check us out at Wolves Fancast across YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And um, as usual, we end our preview shows with a uh, music act. This is a good friend of mine, Pogman. 
he's a big Wolves fan, recently moved to America. He had a song um, track that uh, was called Chin Ups, which came about about a week ago. This Friday, he has an EP uh, called Music That I Like to Make, Volume 1. Pre-save it on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen to music. As I said, Pogman, big Wolves fan. Thanks for joining us. Have a good weekend and shit on the villa because Leon Chihuahua has a Brighton seagull and this is what seagulls do. They shit on the villa. Good night. Give me that.